Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to focus on equilibrium wages in the labour market. Taking data for the UK from 2014, there are big variations in the median full-time gross weekly pay for many different types of jobs. Right at the top are pilots, flight engineers, air traffic controllers, chief executives, earning a median pay of over £1,500 a week. Whereas down in the lower parts of the labour market, people like bar staff, hairdressers and barbers, people working in leisure and theme parks are earning well less than £300 a week. It's clear that the equilibrium wages in different labour markets vary greatly. And we've got a separate topic video on the key causes of wage and earnings differentials. But for now, let's focus on the basic theory of equilibrium wages. So the equilibrium wage in a particular labour market is the intersection of the supply of and the demand for labour. And we normally assume that employees in a profit maximising business will be hired up to the point where the extra cost of taking on an employee, like the marginal cost of the extra worker, equates to the extra sales revenue from selling their output, be it a good or a service. So in our diagram here, W1 is the equilibrium wage and E1 is the equilibrium employment level. Well, clearly, changes in labour demand and labour supply will bring about changes in the equilibrium wage. Let's have a look at a few examples. In our first example, we, we see an outward shift in the demand for labour, with the labour supply curve as fairly inelastic. This could be, for example, an increase in the demand for people working in the in care sector. An increase in labour demand drives up the equilibrium wage from W1 to W2 and increases the equilibrium level of employment from E1 to E2. Strong labour demand often leads to higher wages in particular jobs. Let's have a look at some more changes. In this example, we see an influx of people into a particular occupation. In other words, an outward shift of the labour supply curve from LS1 to LS2. And assuming a given level of labour demand, then the equilibrium wage will fall from W1 to W2 even though more people will be in employment in this industry. And thirdly, let's take a look at an inward shift of labour demand, perhaps the result of a recession. Labour demand shifts from LD1 to LD2. That drives down the equilibrium wage rate on offer in the industry and, of course, also leads to a contraction of employment. Now, we're assuming in this model that wages and employment do respond to these shifts in demand and supply. So it could be the case that wages are fairly sticky. For example, at W1, they don't necessarily fall. And there could be some imperfections in the labour market preventing that from happening. But this is the basic economics of shifting labour demand and labour supply and how it affects wages. We'll take a look at wage differentials in our, our next topic video. But for now, this is an introduction to equilibrium wages in the labour market.